Now, yay, there we go. I'm recording. Taya. Hi. I am so excited to have you on here. You are an absolute Canadian dream boat. <laughs> What's going Aww. on with you? What's happening right now? Where are you? Are you in Florida? No, oh, you're no. in California. Yes, we moved immediately back to the West Coast. So um, I'm in Sherman Oaks. We have a house here, John and I. Um, I'm just in my very messy office that I'm framing in a way that you can't see. <laughs> <this> messy, but <laughs> That's always the way, right? It, the, honestly, the other side of this camera, there's like, it's a disaster up here too. It, but hey, you only see the fake plant in the picture and it's fine yeah john's like john saw me right before and he's just like oh you look so professional I'm like i look like i'm sitting in like a pile of junk room like <laughs> dude how was moving back to the west coast like getting all your ducks in a row to be like okay we're not doing this thing anymore we're headed out west what um, all went into that for you guys it was complicated and i'm like so thankful that we were able to move back. I'm really glad we didn't sell our house when we moved to Florida because uh, we had someone renting out some of the house. Oh, that's good. Um, Cause that would have been an absolute disaster. So it was just complicated. And then also just like coming back here have after not really have been here for a year, I was like, whose shit is this? Like, I was like whose stuff is all this? Uh, and there was a lot of like having to go through everything because we had double of things. And, you know, I'm like, I, why do I have, why do I have so much junk? <laughs> do you guys like have to be like John and I are like this all the time, especially like we moved into our house like eight months ago, something like that. I feel like maybe every two months I'm like, all right, time to call 1-800-GOT-JUNK. This shit has got to get out of this house because you just accumulate so much crap over time. And whether it's like clothes that you need for work that all of a sudden, oh, that's not the gear I'm wearing anymore. Like that's not really the look I'm doing. Like we have such an accumulation of like junk in our house all the time. Are you guys weeding through all that? All like all the time. And there's still like a box of clothes downstairs in our living room which should not be there <laughs> that's like it's it's scary how those things just become like a part of the furniture it's, though yeah, it's part of the decor now yes. it's yeah. a box like, like of all frankie monet clothes from television and i'm like I, I feel bad because i don't like being wasteful but then it yeah. also makes me like a clothing and shoe hoarder but i am just I really try to make an effort to like give donate stuff or yes. give stuff to friends or like you know i wore this I don't spend a lot of money <laughs> on, right. on TV looks, uh, you know, for backstage things. As you normal. shouldn't. I mean, usually the cheaper stuff is what's going to pop anyway. Give me yeah. a sequin, give me a tassel, call yeah. it a day. It's a little fur coat moment. <laughs> you know? yes. But it's just like, it just like accumulates. And then, you know, now, cause I'm working on these different TV shows where I am kind of like these different versions of Taya in the metaverse of worlds, yes. you know? So I have like a specific kind of vibe for AAA and a specific vibe for impact where I'm paired with Rosemary. And then it's, yeah. I mean, so I'm like, Taya has a lot of stuff. Like <laughs> she's it's a versatile like, player, you know, she's not at all. <laughs> How is that going from, okay. So you, like going from like wrestling before being signed to NXT coming in as Frankie Monet, now getting back to Taya and figuring out all of these different characters and all the different changes that you want to do. Um, how do you kind of pivot between those characters? I mean, this is where I thrive the best. I think I've just always kind of been someone um, who's very over the top <laughs> and really <laughs> enjoys, you know, putting a lot of thought into my character work and in the ring and just like everything. So being able to play these different parts again, or these kind of layers that of who is Taya is really is really great. And I'm having the most fun I've had forever. And going back to these places where I worked before, you know, it was almost like I just never left like, yeah. because it was so short lived my time in WWE. And I, I was, I'm so grateful that I had like those relationships with people, um, you know, in different promotions and everyone was so welcoming and just like, come on down. Like, <laughs> yeah. You know? So it's been, it's been really awesome. And I'm just allowed so much creative freedom. My ideas are, you know, acknowledged and listened to. And also I, they trust me with my vision. And I yeah. think that as an artist, as a performer, I've been a performer my whole life. So, you know, I just am, I know what I want to do and I know the, the visual I want to create for the fans or the feeling I want them to feel. So, um, it's been really awesome and inspiring. How much of a hand did you have in putting together the Frankie Monet character? 
Uh, uh, quite a bit, honestly. It was a lot. I think it was like the she was the brainchild of like Road Dog and me. <laughs> you know, we would talk about <laughs> who Taya was, and you know, I would always just say like Frankie is Taya, but with like way more money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, so yeah. and then like Presley coming into it. I don't even really remember like whose exact idea that was, uh, but. I had had Presley with me on impact before Presley has, you know, been in movies and things. So been he, there and done that. He's she know. A yeah. star. He's yeah. got a calendar for Tuesday. <laughs> NXT. Uh, so that was just an easy kind of fun thing. They originally wanted me to have Bowie, which is our white Pomeranian. Okay. But he is a bad boy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> he's bad. He's so cute. He's just very mischievous. Like I'm like, he's like the Bart Simpson Dennis <laughs> of our family. Uh, and Presley just is not having it. So Presley was officially Presley got the role. over. Yeah. Bowie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> The casting like, went no where way. it was supposed to. Yeah. yeah like, there's no way Bowie is running across the, like the PC on command and things like that. I'm like, no, <laughs> not happening. Well, at least, you know, you know, the limitations, you know, yes, to, to, <laughs> to make it work. That is the dream though. I remember when I was doing commentary, I was like, can I have my dog be my sidekick when I was on commentary? I was like, just throwing shit against the wall. My dog would never be able to do that. One of them's too afraid. And the other one's like, he would be over it. it yeah, like just Presley, not happen, but. Presley came right, like would come to the ring with me to a lot of my shows in Los Angeles all the time. So yeah. and at, when we, when he was a puppy, we actually had a ring at our house. So he was, he's very used to the sounds of wrestling whatever yeah. that, you know? Yeah. But if you open like an Amazon box in front of him, he freaks out. So <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Hey, we've all got our ticks. It's yeah. fine. Yeah. It's fine. Um, was there ever talks of uh, of you and John working together when you were with WWE? Um, I remember it was brought up a lot at first. Uh, honestly, like they were like, well, you might get put with John and da, 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 you know, about when I was yeah. asking, like where a story was going or what was going on. And um, obviously John was also like pushing to have me be with him. But it was like, it just, there was never the right time. And like, that's the main, let's be real here. Like a huge motivator for me to go to WWE, not only because I was trying to accomplish this dream that I've had since the beginning of time, but yeah. also to be reunited with John because we did some of our best work together on Lucha Underground and in Impact Wrestling and all over the place. So I really was like every day thinking, you know, like the big picture here, even if I was uncomfortable or having a bad day or stressed the hell out, like we, a lot of us are there. I was just always with that vision of being like, you know, I will, I need to get to John, you know, so <laughs> yes. that was, you know, I, unfortunately it just didn't work out that way, but it's, it is what it is. And yeah. I also just like thinking about that time as just like a small fraction of my life. And a lot of people almost want me to say more bad things, but I was like, I've said it all. It is what yeah. it is. You know, yeah. So. yeah. And when it is like that small period, too, it's like you got to go in there. You got to kind of scratch that itch a bit. I'm sure there was way more things that you would have loved to have been able to do while under contract there and blah, blah, blah. But you look at that situation as well. It's like you come in, there's the pandemic. There was all of these other obstacles of things that got in the way. So as annoying and frustrating as that can be. Um, it's awesome that you've been able to land on your feet, obviously on the other side with, you know, you look at your resume, of course you were able to, <laughs> but to be able to Thank not you. just do all of the things that you want to do. It's, it's nice to see you just like, yeah, yeah I, I love mean, that. Even, even when I got signed, I was like, I don't know, you know, like, I don't know what, what happened. was that process like, cause I'm sure you must've had many different moments of like auditioning or like trying out. Right. Well, I actually was contacted directly by WWE and then they spoke to John and then yeah. they spoke to me again. And then, you know, like we, they watched video of me and stuff like that. And that's pretty much how I got my opportunity based on my resume alone. Um, so, but it's still like, uh, you know, it is a lengthy process yeah. of getting in there. And so no matter what I was not convinced this shit was going down until I was like walking into the PC because yeah. I was like, I don't know, man, like I'm so been wrestling a long time. And I like, I don't count on anything until it's like happening, you know? Yeah. yeah. So there's months of like the medical stuff and the background checks and then the, this and the that's and the meetings. And then you're like, did I pass medical? I don't know. Like it's, <laughs> you know, I, so I was very like casual about that process 
But then like when it came down to it, I was like, we need to rent an apartment. We need to have this stuff lined out because it's like such a small window Yeah, where you have to like officially have the last piece of paper signed and the day you're supposed to show up to work. So there is yeah, a once they my- get rolling they get rolling. I remember I was like still living in Toronto and they're like, we were waiting on my visa to come through. They're like, can you just fly down and like do this quick? It was like, I was actually interviewing the Rolling Stones, which I was like, uh, yeah, of course, no yeah. shit. But I had not even like actually officially started. I don't even think I had fully signed my contracts yet, but I was like, we're going now. You work here. Yeah. Let's get the ball rolling. Like yeah, you and have to be ready felt. to move. And it's like it's a whirlwind nuts. of like, holy shit. Yeah. This is happening. Oh my God. And like shipping stuff. And then of course I'm just like shipping way too much stuff. And I'm like, Take it <laughs> why all. do I need 10 fur coats? I don't know. God, <laughs> uh, that sounds like me just packing to go away for a weekend. I was like, yeah. oh, I definitely am going to need these over the knee cowboy boots. Don't ever wear them. It's like, just <laughs> pick and choose what you actually need. Oh my God. I'm so bad for that. Um, okay. So your stay with WWB was um, fairly short. Was there... I guess I don't don't want to phrase this to like sound negative, but like, was there a part of you, like, did it take you a second to go, okay, right. This is who I am. And this is what I'm doing. Well, or like after you left and you were like, okay, I'm going and I'm Taya. I'm back doing my thing. I'm not doing the Frankie Monet thing anymore. I know a lot of people sometimes have a bit of an odd time adjusting from the WWE life back into working the indies and doing other shows, but you weren't there for too, too long. So how much of that kind of seeped in, I guess. Um, I think more than anything, I was like mentally a disaster, like Mm. right when it happened, because it was so unexpected for me. And I know people can be like, well, you knew what was happening and like, you don't know what my experience is. Every zip experience is different and how you handle things or whatever it is. And I think that because it was like, I got released two weeks later, John got released. Like it was just so much that I like mentally was like questioning every part of like myself, you know, yeah. like yeah. did I, was it because of this? Was it because of that? And John would always tell me like, you can't make sense of something that makes no sense. And I was like, well, I'm just trying to explain it to my, like, I don't know. Like, I think I was just like, it took me a long time to just kind of get my feet wet again. And like, mm-hmm. whatever, even though like I had accomplished a million and two things before ever going there. I was an established professional wrestler on multiple platforms and that accomplished a lot of things that a lot of people said I couldn't do, but I was still questioning my ability. And there were even t- times when I was just like, I don't even know if I should wrestle anymore. Yeah. I'm the shit. What the f-? like all this kind of stuff. And it was pretty hard, but yeah, I think the time that I had, because it was Christmas, like it's right before the holidays. Of course, right? When it rains, it pours, bring it all on. Nobody's getting any presents this year. Yeah, no, I'm broke. I don't got a job. (laughs) (laughs) But I like, you know, I took that time over Christmas to like be with my family and and be with John. You know, like we went to Hawaii with John's family. Then we went to to Canada, to, to Victoria and stuff. And I really made a point of like, I'm not taking any bookings until like the middle of January. And yeah. I kind of just, like gave myself that time. But even when I look back now on how I felt in January or even in February, I'm like, I don't, I don't know if I was totally ready at that point. Yeah. I'm really glad that I took even more time to return to like, you know, impact wrestling and to return to television products. Cause then by that time I was like, let's f- go. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. Re- remember who you are and like, oh, there like- she is. Yeah, <laughs> and it, it really is like it's nice once that connection happens because you almost have to like push the little baby bird out of the nest. And you're like, well, just go. You're going to have to figure it out again and find that groove. And it's it's not always easy. Yeah, I was kind of wondering that for you as I was like putting together questions and stuff of just like you always seem so like optimistic and like ready to go and so passionate about what you do. What was that feeling like of feeling like you kind of like lost your passion or wondering if you should still be doing this? It really sucked. Like, I don't really know how else to say it. I was just like, I have like I've dealt with like a lot of anxiety over the years and self-doubt because like, I just, I don't come from wrestling. I really had, you know how it is as a Canadian. Yeah. You really have to make these huge sacrifices and huge moves to kind of get out of the country and, and work legally and do all this kind of stuff. There's so much red tape for us. And Thank God for those American husbands, right? Woo. Name John. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Name John. <laughs> so I was just, you know, very, I was, it was, you know, it's, it's, it's scary, but like, I just, 
Sorry, my brain just like farted there for a second. Um, it's all right. The, we were we, the the American husbands threw us off. Those American Johns, we love American them. Johns and being positive and stuff like that. So yeah. I've always just kind of taken this road less traveled, and I've always had to really fight for what I what I want to do, um, yeah. like going to Mexico and be, these naysayers and stuff like that. But like I, at the end of the day, I am a very optimistic person. I'm positive. I don't like sitting around and mulling over like negative things. Like I really feel, as you can tell by my schedule over the last few months. I enjoy working. Wrestling yeah. feeds, is my passion. It feeds my soul. If I'm not wrestling or I'm not performing, or I'm not being creative. I don't feel alive anymore. Yeah. And that's a very like, that's a scary feeling. It really yeah. is like a mind. F- yeah. It really you was. Like you and- lose that big chunk of yourself. You're like, holy shit. I feel like the rug's been pulled out from under me. How do I put it back? Yeah, Get me my rug like- back. I wanted to wrestle. And I think that was the biggest thing that caught me off guard when I was there was that I just wasn't wrestling el- enough. Yeah. And I was, I went from working, you know, through COVID with no fans working at Skyway studios for impact every few weeks. And then right into WWE. And I just, and even before that I was wrestling so much, but I like love to wrestle. I love to tell stories. I love to perform and be creative and think about the stupid themed outfit I'm going to wear for the pay-per-view. Like that stuff makes me happy. So when I was there and I wasn't getting to do that, because of how this, we didn't, we weren't doing house shows during that whole year. They still weren't doing, uh, I think they just started doing those again anyways. Yeah. Um, there just really wasn't a lot of wrestling. And I was just like, like withering away, you know, it's in my, my passion itself was just like, oh my God, like, I just want to go, and, you know, perform and do stuff. So that has been a huge blessing of being able to come back and, and do what I'm doing now is I'm doing a lot of wrestling. <laughs> Hell yes, you are. You said something interesting. You said, I'm not, I don't come from wrestling, but you've been doing this for such a long time. Why? Like, why do you have that mindset of thinking that you don't come from wrestling? I mean, I feel like you come from wrestling as much as anybody could come from Uh, wrestling. When I say don't come from wrestling, I mean like my family aren't wrestlers. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Teacher parents, one taught kindergarten and one was like English as a second language, you know, elementary school teachers in Victoria, British. Yeah. So yeah, okay. I don't come from the wrestling world, I guess is a better like word, uh, way of saying it, but I am a wrestler through and through, you know, I've been doing this for 12 years. I've wrestled everywhere. And I, you know, I think that one day when I write my book, it's going to be very interesting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You've walked a, a hell of a life. What is your, what was like your parents' reaction to you wanting to get into this world? I mean, I know you've been a performer your whole life, but once you made the connection that pro wrestling was a thing that you wanted to do, what did they think of that? Oh, I think they thought I was so crazy. <laughs> Especially in like Victoria, which like, I've never been to Victoria. It seems like it's the most magical fairyland place yeah, on earth. It, it looks is beautiful, but I feel like it seems, is it, does it, do you feel isolated at all when you're in Victoria? Absolutely. Which is why when I graduated high school, I went to the university of Calgary. So okay, I was living in Calgary when I decided to get into wrestling and I knew that I wanted to be a wrestler because I just, I was picked on a lot as a little kid for being too short, too skinny, you know, I don't know all the stupid things. Yeah. Kids make fun of you for. Uh, and so I was really like always motivated to be like, even a, I found like this book that I'd written notes in when I was like 15 or something. And I was like, oh, I'm going to show them and like all this kind of like <laughs> stuff. And I'm like, woo. Uh, so I was just always motivated to really reach for the stars, so to speak. Uh, and when I was like, when I would watch divas on television, obviously our Canadian uh, icon that is Trish Stratus. Yes. Uh, watch her on TV or watch Victoria on TV and Tori Wilson. And, you know, all that era was really like when I was like, I want to be like Trish, mm-hmm. you know, I didn't know how to be like Trish. Yeah. <laughs> I'm still trying to yeah. be like Trish. Uh, and I'm, I'm still trying to be like Trish too. I'm like, girl, where'd you get your hair done to teach me everything? Yeah, like how's what's the <laughs> secret? Um, uh, I know. <laughs> So like I, when I was in Calgary was when I kind of like really was like, I want to be a wrestler, but still didn't know how to do it, obviously. Um, but that's why I got into fitness competition because Trish was in fitness and Victoria was in fitness and yeah. that was how, how I was going to make my mark. And how were you figuring that stuff out about those women at that time? Because I feel like during that time, the internet access wasn't quite what it is today in terms of just being able to like pull up someone's Wikipedia. Oh, they trained here, here, and here. Like, how are you gathering intel on what you should be doing? Yeah. Back in the olden days when Instagram. Back in the good old days, <laughs> not to date us. But... <laughs> uh, oops. 
Um, but I think I was just like reading articles, you know, about them because I would like buy a lot of sports magazines and like, you know, and then yeah. so I'd read articles about them doing competitions or stuff online. Honestly, I was, I was doing the old Google searches like everybody else and yeah. just trying to figure it out. And I feel like Trish was such a Canadian icon that yeah. she was all over everything in Canada. <laughs> She's Miss Canada. She should have her own day. Yeah. When, when are we going to have Trish Stratus day? Yeah, let's go. So I, yeah, like I was just like, this is what I'm going to do. And it's really funny. Cause like a lot of my best girlfriends were like bridesmaids at my wedding and stuff. They like still remember us like bartending together at Cowboys nightclub when I was like 19 being like, <laughs> I want to be a wrestler. <laughs> So I like, love so like, that. Like, you really you really did that that's pretty freaking awesome but yes. so yeah it was just you know being motivated by them to kind of like find that find my own path and so my parents when I decided to when I started wrestling at Lance Storm School like I'd already had like a a tryout and like some different interactions with WWE at that point and just based on my fitness stuff so yeah. my plan worked basically yeah um, yeah and, and they were just kind of like, okay. Like, I think they thought it was like a phase or like something weird that I was going through, but yeah. no, 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 no. This here is, we are. <laughs> here we still are doing and, it. Yeah. And then I went to Mexico and I still think about like, if I was my mom and my daughter did what I did, like, would I be okay with that? And the- I think about that shit all the time. Now yes, having a I'm daughter, like, I'm like crazy. <laughs> How did my mom let me just like get up and move away at like such a young age? And I was like, deuces, I got shit to do. I got to go. Like if my daughter wants to do that, I would die. I think I would wither away and die. Yeah. So, and I'm like, did I not ever think about like, Hey, I'm going to this foreign country. I don't know anybody. I don't speak the language. I am, you know, like, am I going to get kidnapped? But to me, I was like, oh, it's fine. Let's, fine. you know, stay. I stood out so bad. Like I was. <laughs> So much, you know, blonder than everybody, taller than everybody. I'm just Do you have, I don't know myself. if this is like, a, I don't know if this is like a Canadian thing, but I certainly have this of like, I always just assume that everybody has good intentions as well. Yeah. So like when I'm tra- traveling, I'm like, oh, they're fine. I'm sure they're gonna be fine. Like they're probably here for the same reason I'm here. Like I they never want to be luchadoras. <laughs> <laughs> I just never, it, it, I mean, yes, it sounds so naive and stupid to say that, but like, I often just put so much faith in like other people's oh, yeah. like good humanity that like, and honestly, like knock on wood, it's kind of worked out so far that I'm yeah, like, I, oh, I think everyone's kind of cool, but we're two blondes from Canada. Just trying to make it in the world. <laughs> just trying to make shit happen. Um, oh, yeah. but, okay. So you're in Mexico. You are like out there just discovering the world. Do you go all by yourself? No, there was uh, three other students that kind of okay. went through with me. So how this hell kind of happened was that I had like, I got in contact with Conan, who's now like a huge part of my heart. He's like my wrestling uncle. He takes, yeah. you know, we talk all the time. We, he is really was like one of the, the first person to really believe in whatever I was trying to, <laughs> to do. Yeah. Um, and so like, I went down there and I was staying in a house with that, like, Conan was living in Nicho, Psychosis. The original Psychosis was living yeah. there. At one point, Silver King was living there. Halloween would stop by. Like, it was the craziest shit. Like, I'm like, <laughs> I just recently was telling a story to someone and they were like, what? I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's very strange now to think about. Um, but, and we were only <laughs> and with these other students and we were only supposed to train like, you know, three to five weeks. <laughs> How long were you there for? I stayed five years. Holy shit. Yeah. Wow. So I was like, just kind of thrown into it. I obviously didn't know like anything about the differences between Lucha Libre style and wrestling style. Like at the time I thought I knew everything I'm ready to go. And like, I remember going to my first training session at Gimnasio Jordan, which is in like downtown Mexico city and silver King was teaching the, like the class and there was who now we all know as Lady Shani and Lou Dark were there as well. Um, and I remember he, uh, he asked me in like, you know, broken English, like how long I was going to stay. And I'm like, I don't know, like three to five weeks. And he's like, well, you should just go home. You're not going to learn anything in that time. <laughs> and I was just like, okay. but, but, but you know what I mean? Yeah. And I was like, just like how I've always been. Screw this guy. Like, I'm going to do this. And, and I didn't care. You know, I was so broke for a long time. I was just like making it 
I don't know how, but making it work. Uh And, you know, I was training all the time every night with him. I was training in the morning with uh, the late great Grand Apache and also doing some afternoon sessions with Sky Day, all while maneuvering Mexico City as a little Canadian. And, uh, you know, in the first few days I was there, Conan introduced me to El Hijo del Perro Aguayo, who then said to me, how long are you going to stay? And I said, I don't know, three, five weeks. And he goes, no, I think you we change your plans. You're going to stay here now and be part of our faction. So Great. then I started, you know, balleting and managing for him on AAA TV. I wasn't, I wasn't like signed to AAA right away. It took me yeah. about like eight to nine months of traveling with Pero and being on TV with him. And then like, eventually I was like, Hey, Conan, Pero, what do you guys think about me? Not wearing heels in a dress. I want to be more involved in the matches. Can I wear gear? And yeah. like, things like that, that started kind of like moving everything along. And that's exactly what happened. And I, you know, eventually so I started in March and by November I was, had been offered to be full-time with AAA. So, wow. Yeah. Oh my gosh. What, what was it about the Lucha style that just like sucked you in while you were there? I mean, you come from training with Lance Storm to then going down to Very Mexico. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like how did you kind of just like bridge the gap between what you learned from Lance into what you were learning there? A lot of like, things that I had learned from Lance, which were, you know, the the essential basics of what is professional wrestling. Like I really had to just wrap my head around that. Some of the things that happened in the States and our style are completely different. Like I remember just going to watch Lucha Libre shows at Arena Nau Calpan, which is actually where like uh, Nacho Libre's Nacho Libre was filmed. Uh, Oh, really? Yeah. So I, we would, go to these shows like it was really cheap you just take subway take the bus then you like get your cheap beer with the michelada stuff on it and like eat your nachos and watch wrestling yes and, um i was that sounds just, great that actually sounds like a great way to spend your time oh my god it was great it was it's still like the, the cheapest cheese in the world but to me at the time i was just like yes uh, <laughs> and I would watch wrestling and just be like, I don't understand anything that's going on here. The psychology is totally different. If that, or is it non-existent? I don't know. But I just started trying to like understand, you know, the, the formula of how these kind of matches are put together. And I just really fell in love with the fact that the Mexican fans are just a whole other level of passionate and crazy yeah. and just believe it. If this is literally is ingrained in their culture. So yeah. There's such a different level of respect and mystery and magic and all this kind of stuff that goes into it. And, you know, like that's another reason why I have the biggest entrance coats in the history of entrance coats, because, (laughs) you know, every time I would go to a pay-per-view, like Conan's like, I think I love your jacket, but let's make it a little bigger and let's make it a little bigger because (laughs) that's just how it is. If you look at, you know, um, someone like blue demon or phantasma's dad, or like, Mm -hmm. you know, like everything like that. Like they all had these crazy, mysterious, wonderful looks, which was, which puts in this, puts you in this totally different kind of category. I don't know. I love that. No, I love that shit too. Like that stuff pumps me up. Like even when I went over um, with John, when he was working with uh, new Japan and did wrestle kingdom. And I just got to like be there as a fan and watched it. And I was like, Holy shit. Like it just changed my perspective of wrestling and like their gear, their entrance, the pageantry, what the fans were like. It's so cool just being submerged in another culture and something that you're already so familiar with, but seeing it in a different way through a different lens is so cool. Absolutely. And it's just inspiring and fun and, and different. And like, it's so cool for me to now be seeing like how many Lucha Libre influences you see in the American style and yeah. in you know new wrestlers coming up and it's just it's really cool. It's yeah, it is. Wrestling's cool, guys. You heard it here. <laughs> Wrestling cool. is cool. <laughs> um, okay, I want to go back to you being a young baby, Taya, little sweet baby babe that got <laughs> into doing ballet. So yeah. you started out as a ballerina, went on to. Uh, Ballet of Win- Winnipeg Ballet. How do you I say trained it? at the Royal Winnipeg Ballet for summer. Royal Winnipeg Ballet. That's for summer cool. schools when I was like, you know, a teenager and stuff like that. So my parents would ship me off there, but I was so bye happy bye. to go. <laughs> it's like, what bye. was um, what was like that world like? Though? I mean, I feel like you've obviously been in such like pressure cooker situations in terms of like what is expected of you as a ballerina, the the like regime to like 
it's that's like a very strict world. Yeah. I mean, I just was obsessed. I mean, I think my parents put me in dance when I was like three or four. I trained at the Pacific Dance Center with Maureen Eastick. And, you know, we, she, I think that a lot of my costume ridiculousness actually comes from influences of her too, because she had these giant productions like every two years where the costumes were fantastic. And she went to like costume design school also before being a dance teacher. Uh, so it was just the strictness and all that kind of stuff. I just thrived in it. I was like a, a perfectionist and I was just, you know, really good at it. And I was yeah. small and short and I was just, you know, I was put on point shoes when I was nine. I remember my mom getting the letter, like at the end of summer, like about my new schedule. And I was like supposed to be doing ballet, like five, six times a week. And I was nine, 10 years old. And she's even yeah. calling the school. like being like, are you sure she's supposed to be in this point class? And they're like, oh yeah, she's strong enough. And da, 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 da. so I really think that like a lot of the discipline and the hard work that was instilled in me through my dancing has like parlayed into like what I'm doing now. And, you know, yeah. it's really important as a little kid. Like I was just, you know, working really hard, going to school, dancing, running track, doing like all the little kid stuff. But I also had this really strict schedule that, and I wanted yeah. to be the best. And I feel like, you know, you can see that now and how hard I work in, in professional wrestling is like, I just always want to be the best and push myself. What track did you do? track. Oh, I ran like four by four. I ran like four by one. I was good on the corner. <laughs> I was yeah, me too. Third. I love the corner. I was the anchor on that relay. Let's yeah, close this bitch out. <laughs> 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 oh, I love some good track and field. Um, did you ever fall into, um, you know, you, you always see like, you know, the, the ballerina lifestyle of being really tiny. We're not eating anything. Did you fall into any of those bad habits? I luckily did not. Oh, I, great. I was so skinny <laughs> as a kid that it didn't matter what I stuffed in my mouth. Oh my gosh. And like oh, my dad, to, to have those days back, right? Oh, give me those days. Like, so my dad's from Switzerland and they owned like a bakery in Switzerland, like my whole life growing up. And so he would bake all the time at home in Victoria. And so I was just like stuffing my face with chocolate stuffed croissants every day and just, like going to ballet practice and being super thin. So I never really experienced that. I did see it, especially when I would go to uh, the camps and stuff like that. You could really yeah. see and even being like 11, 12 years old and being like, I something's not right here, you know, with when you see other girls going through things. Yeah. But I mean, it was, it's very strict. And, you know, I've had things thrown at me by dance teachers. <laughs> oh my God. All sorts of crazy it's so, but isn't it funny though, when you think about stuff like that, like I, I played a ton of sports and stuff growing up. And when you get those coaches that like, you couldn't get away with that shit today. No, but I kind I, of enjoyed that. I got to live through some of that stuff. Oh yeah. And like, just what like wrong you know, in stretching <laughs> class and I'm crying and they're like, ah, like, <laughs> and just, I remember going home being like, oh my God, like I did. I never want to dance. Like I, you know, I'm so sad. I'm not good enough. You know, like all the things you say is yeah. like a little kid, uh, like dramatic. <laughs> and then my mom's like, okay, if you don't want to do it, you don't have to do it. No, I want to do it. Like I <laughs> <laughs> just let me vent, please. Ah, the theatrics. Yeah. Um, your dad is Swiss. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. What is, what was, how much of that culture, like, did you grow up with? I mean, you mentioned some of the bakeries and all that stuff, but, um, just of like that, that's from Switzerland. What, what kind of, yeah. So like, um, what is the word I'm looking for? Uh, tradition stuff like that, that you guys do. Uh, um, well, he's from Preversivirie, which is like a tiny village. Like, I mean, a street <laughs> next to Sivirie, which is next to Romand, which is like kind of by Fribourg okay. area. Uh, yeah. And his parents owned a bakery and a corner store. So when we were little kids, we would go over there in the summers because uh, my parents were both teachers. So you'd have those like the July, August, let's go to Europe. And I thought that was totally normal. Um, and I would, you know, go and hang out and there was literally like a, a, their little bakery corner store and then the lecheria, which is like where they make the cheese and the milk and the stuff. And then mm -hmm. the little school where everybody went to school of the state, you know, of all ages, it was tiny, tiny, tiny. So oh. we would do, you know, there was always Swiss food in our house still to this day. When I go home to Victoria for Christmas Eve dinner, we have raclette because oh. my dad 
has a God, what I a always, dream. Oh my God, so much cheese. I remember, okay, I'll just sway away from this for a second. I remember the first time John went to dinner and had raclette and he, he we left afterwards. He goes, so you mean to tell me that Swiss Christmas tradition is potato and cheese? <laughs> You and your abs heard that right. Tuts. Yes. And maybe <laughs> some little pickles and some little onions. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was, so we just had like a lot of more of the traditional food and he would bake at home all the time. And like, it was just very fun. And we, I remember we would go to like St. Nicholas Swiss, like the Swiss club in Victoria. <laughs> I love like, that they even had one. That's I know, great. It's so bizarre. So we would go to like the Swiss club and like, do the Christmas thing, you know, every year. And I remember that being really fun and sing songs and eat too much cheese and bread, you know. How did your dad end up in Victoria of all places from to come from Switzerland to end up in Victoria? What happened? So my mom's from Vancouver, uh, born and raised in Burnaby. And she, when she was 20 years old in 1920, wanted to learn French. So she tried to go to Quebec and she had a horrible time trying to learn French. Um, and then she said, you know what? I'm just going to go to Europe. And I'm like, mom, do you wonder where I get this from? Like, <laughs> <laughs> so she went to Switzerland to learn French and met my dad and then they got married. And instead of, uh, you know, staying in Switzerland, they decided to come and, you know, have a family in Canada. So wow, okay. like, been raised in Switzerland, you know, so. <laughs> isn't it so crazy to think of that? Like, yeah, you could your whole entire. Yeah. I mean, imagine you and Claudio just ripping it up out in Switzerland as babies. <laughs> yeah. So that's, that's, that's wild. how that came to be. Yeah. So I spoke French growing up. It was actually my first language. Really? Um, yeah. And I spoke like I, I say spoke, I still understand. And if with, when I'm with my dad, I, it comes back, but yeah. now like, I understand everything, but I go to speak it and Spanish just comes out. Like, it's like, bleh, like my brain can't like wow. process it all. So I would go to school and, ha you know, be speaking in like slang Euro French, because that's what I was hearing at home. Yeah. And I was like seven and my teacher's like, <laughs> no, not right. And because like, <laughs> I don't know if you know this, but like, Canadian French counts in a certain way, whereas like European sure. French does a different yes. way. And I knew all the like the product names for European products and not the American, the Canadian product. It was very, now I'm like, <laughs> what the hell? They must have just been like, what is, who is this kid? Like, <laughs> I feel like that happens. And I'm, I'm obviously certainly very biased to this, but I feel like that happens a lot in Canada of just like, I, there's such a, a European influence there of like, I mean, I had so many friends who like their mom's Scottish and there's persons Irish. And we just, I feel like there was so much more of an influence of that. I don't, I mean, obviously there's some of that here in America, but I feel like that it was just like that. It was you know? very, I feel like the, like what you're like going on, what you're saying is like, it just seems to be seem to be like more in your face of like all the yeah. different cultures and the, yes. and the mix of everybody. Like my yeah. mom obviously is born in Vancouver, but she is 29 different types of things at the same time. Yeah. So like, that's just how it is. And I just remember having, you know, friends from every culture and going to these different parties yes. and, and yeah. you know, all different religions and everybody. It's just like out, you know, very out there. I love it. I love it so much. I, I always think that like with my daughter, I'm like, I got to get her ass up to Canada like a lot. I want her to know Canada and to like feel I want her to feel like that's at least like part of home for her. Yeah. Canada is just it's the best. I miss it so, so much. I miss seasons. <laughs> I do. I know we kind of get seasons here in Cincinnati now, like which is amazing. Um, but this is our first like full year being here. So I'm still kind of feeling it out, but I know the seasons are just call me a basic bitch, but I love it. Let me get some fall foliage up in I, here. Yeah. Let me wear a pet, like an oversized turtleneck sweater and some knee high boots from Aldo, you know, <laughs> <laughs> a little Le Chateau please. And thank you. <laughs> a little faux fur from Le Chateau, which yeah. I heard that store is coming back. Really? Yes. <gasps> As it should, God, that was like the place to be was Le Chateau. It was like very like club wear inspired. Oh, I had yeah. no like, business I, being in there, but I was always wearing really weird stuff. Go figure. Uh, <laughs> when I was a little kid. And so like my dad and I would go to Le Chateau and like, buy <laughs> stuff all the time, and I'm like this is very inappropriate. Like, <laughs> 
God, I know. I remember doing that too. Like I remember like wearing like crop tops and I should not have been wearing crop tops. And like when like bell bottoms were like the move. Oh yeah. Oh the my zipper God. Up the back. So Did you have like the zipper up the back? Oh like- God. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Oh yes. Oh, could you imagine trying to wear a pant like that now? No, thank you. Oh my God. It's awful. <laughs> no, thank you. That looks good on it. My 12 year old body. It will not work today. It does not cross over. It does not work. Um, you and John, how did you guys meet? What's the love story here? I love a good love story. Well, we first met like in person. Cause he would come to AAA. Uh, started coming to AAA once Lucha Underground. So Lucha Underground season one started. I did not get picked for season one. I was devastated. Wow, wow. Uh, and then uh, he started coming in for AAA. And of course, whenever there was anybody that spoke English, I was just like, oh my God, you're my best friend. Yeah. And uh, so we met that way, but that was kind of just it. And then when I found out I was going to Lucha Underground for season two, originally... I was supposed to be Cobra Moon. <laughs> like I had done all the measurements and the costume stuff for Cobra Moon. Oh, wow. And then they told me when I got there, you know, I hope you brought your regular gear. And I was like, yeah, why? And they're just like, we changed everything. You're just Taya now. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. And then they're like, and you're in a faction with Johnny Mundo. And I'm like, okay, what is happening? Why am I being paired with John Morrison? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, and then it, like they added PJ Black and added, you know, yeah, Jack Evans. So that was kind of how it started. And then we were just like working together and that was it. And I like remember, and he also specifically remembers this, was like the first vignette that we shot. He's like in a gym and I'm supposed to be, you know, coming in and talking to him and stuff. And I remember even asking him, like, what is our dynamic? Like, are we buds? Are we flirty? Are we like, I didn't know because first of all, I was just kind of working with this guy for the first time. I'm petrified because I'm like, oh my God, it's John Morrison. And (laughs) Jomo, baby. Little Ty of Valkyrie from Mexico. And uh, (laughs) and he was like, I don't know. Let's just let's just feel it out. And he was being typical, like just like, you know, super over the top, nice John. And then I kind of asked the writers and they're like, let's see just how it goes. I'm like, oh my God, like I need to be told what to do here. Give me some direction, something. So like those first vignettes, when I watch them, I'm like, (laughs) what is happening? What, what, what was the decide of what did you decide that you were going to lead with? Was it flirty or was it buddy? I was going with buddy because I just felt awkward and I didn't know, like, I just didn't know. And I was like super nervous and intimidated. And I was just like, buddies, yay. And so that kind of just how it started. And then as time went on at the, at the temple, like the building where Luch Underground was filmed, John started following me around everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> to the point, like I would be in the makeup chair and he's just in there circling and t- asking me bizarre questions about stuff. And, and I remember once he texted me and being like, what kind of like entrance music do you want? I'm like, what are you talking about? And he's like, you know, entrance music. And I was like, we don't have entrance music at Lucha Underground. What are you talking about? (laughs) Like just strange things. And like one of my favorite stories, and he will will, uh, attest to this, was I was sitting in the room where a lot of the the AAA guys were, uh, were like their locker room or whatever. Because there was like a bunch of small rooms. And I just went in there to talk to everybody, blah, 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 blah. And I was sitting on the couch with Phoenix on one side and Penta on the other. And John just walks into the room and he's like, hola, amigos. And like, just being like really over the top. And everyone's like, what the f-? like kind of thing. And he's just like, Taya, can we talk? And like, I was like, yeah, just give me a second. He walks out and both Phoenix and Pentagon are just like, whoa. <laughs> we have been filming a whole season and a half with this guy and he has never come in here. And now he speaks Spanish. <laughs> Oh my God. And they were just like, and then John showed like wanted to take us all out for dinner and like pay for things and like, and try to impress my friends basically, because you know, like Phoenix Daga and Penta and I, like we all came up together in AAA. So we were like a very tight knit, like family dynamic that we had. And so I thought John was trying to win over my older brothers, you know, like trying to get their approval. And I remember once Daga even says this too, he's like at the after party and John's dancing around and being crazy and Daga's doing the same thing. And I'm still like, so embarrassed. I was like, Oh my God, John, stop that. Like, stop it. (laughs) Daga's like, you better, better stop doing that. 
she's mad. Like, <laughs> just like weird things like that. So basically he followed me around the temple for, for weeks until I agreed to go out with him. <laughs> and here we are. And here we are. We've been married four and a half years and uh, yeah, life is good. It sure is. I, I mean, I feel like not that it's inevitable, but I, I do. I mean, I love, I feel like the wrestling couples, everyone's sort of like perfectly paired with their person in like some weird way. Yeah. Like Mike and Maurice are obviously like so perfect together. Brie and Brian, like there's, it's so funny looking at like the couples that come out of wrestling. And even like when John and I first started dating too, it was very like, not quite like that, but like he would talk to me more than he ever talked to anybody else. Yeah. Like, why is he talking to you? I'm like, I don't know. He just has always talked to me. I didn't think that it was weird. I don't yeah. know why we're making this a thing, but here we are in it. Yeah, it worked ask, out. Asking all these questions and following us around, you know, yeah. can help it. <laughs> damn, damn American Johns. Yeah. Those cuties. <laughs> um, okay. The, the fitness competitions. What is that world like? Like when you first started getting into that and like going from like the, the ballet world and then getting into the fitness modeling world, they've got to be pretty different. Oh yeah. But it was also a very disciplined, uh, yeah. you know, thing. So, you know, that was, maybe that's just what I like. I like having a, a training schedule and having yeah. a goal and really attaining that and stuff. So it was really crazy. And I don't think at first that, I mean, I think it took a few years for me to kind of like figure out like where I fit in and stuff, but I was doing the fitness stuff. So it was the routine. So like yeah. cheerleading and one arm pushups and things and, and then the posing and stuff. And I had found like a pretty good group in Calgary that I was training with and mm -hmm. uh, just kind of started from there. And yeah, it was really fun. It was also very hard though, because it definitely plays with your brain a lot. Oh my God. I couldn't even imagine. Yeah. And I, I definitely think that cause I've struggled with like, you know, different forms of eating disorders as an adult. So yeah. I think that like a lot of that kind of started there on like, you know, really my brain being like, I'm so bad and I'm not. And like, yeah, you know, all these yeah, kinds yeah. of things that we I go know. through yeah. and that plays with our heads. And I, I definitely think that I probably could have gone without doing so much, as much of that as I did, but yeah. uh, it ultimately did lead me to where I am today. So I don't regret it or anything. It's just a def definitely a very difficult path for anybody to, to go through, especially if, you know, you are sensitive to like certain, you know, issues, which by the way, who's not yeah. kind of sensitive to that, you know, like, how could you not be? Yeah. It's, I, it's, I, I can't imagine like not being susceptible to like your body's on display all the time. People are fully judging you simply on your body. Like that's got to f with you. Yeah. How do you, how do you weather the storm of that, or, of, of like the eating disorders and stuff? Like you're constantly on television. You're constantly on display. Like, how do you juggle that? I feel like, I mean, I've talked to the, about this to like some of my girlfriends to a lot of it, of people, you know, I look back on pictures where I thought at that time that I was fat and horrible and all this. Yeah. Stuff. I'm like, Oh my God, like what body dysmorphia did I have? Like, it was yeah. so bad. And then like, I even, you know, I think for me, the main issue with with where that came through was like when I was in Mexico, I was really like suffering with that because I had a lot of stress. It's a very high stress environment living there yeah. and doing what I was doing. And I had a lot of my anxiety kind of issues to started there. Uh, and I just honestly think that now in the last, and I'm, this is serious. Like in the last six months, I'm probably at the best place mentally that I've ever been. Yeah. And really overcome this kind of idea that I'm not good enough or that I'm not pretty enough or I'm not fit enough. Like, I feel like yeah. I'm in a place finally at my age, like it takes a long time. Um, no, but I think that's like very, I, I get that. I think like you get to a place, it's not a matter of just saying like, Oh, it. I think it's like, just like with age comes the wisdom and you kind yeah. of realize what matters and what doesn't matter. Yeah. And um, where, like where I need my body to be so that I don't get injured Yeah, where I need to be. So I can do my job at the best that I can. Like, I remember when I was at my skinniest in Mexico, I was getting hurt all the time, mm -hmm. all the time. And like, just so like, I look back on fiction, I'm like, Oh my God. How was I doing that? Um, it was just really bad, you know, and it wasn't yeah. healthy and like nobody said anything because it was just that I guess at the time everyone was just liked that I was that way. But like honestly, it was super unhealthy. And now I'm just, yeah, I'm in a confident space mentally that I'm like, 
I know that I'm doing the best that I can. I'm training all the time. I yeah. eat well. I take care of my skin. I take, you know, make sure that I'm in a good place to be yeah. able to do my job at the highest level that it requires to be. Yeah. I, th- I think there's definitely something like just with, like I said, like with the age comes the wisdom, but also just the experience and having like lived a life it also certainly helps that the world is like slowly changing where it's like, okay, I don't have to be a size zero to be, you know, seen as valuable or beautiful or any yeah. of those things. And God, I, I, there's so many times I do the same thing. I look back at pictures and I'm like, Oh my God, I look so thin there, but I for sure was like, I would have thought that I was so fat yeah. giving myself such a hard time. Uh, and yeah, now it's just like, Oh, well, this is what we're f- working with. Take it early. <laughs> <Yeah, laughs> bring like, it to the I, table. And I wish I could go back and tell like my younger self, like stop being so hard on yourself. Yeah. I mean, I think we all wish that. Uh, yes. I, even, I even wish that I could go back a year, a year ago and be like, stop being so hard on yourself. You're doing your best. Like this is just the deck. This is, these are the cards that you have yeah. been dealt, and you have to get through it and you will get through it. I've really definitely like grown that way and like, just realized like, okay, like I can control some things. I can't control others. Yeah. And I'm just trying my best, <laughs> I'm trying my best. And there's also something to be said, like there's times that like, I'll look at John and I'm like, oh my God, look at how like you're in such great shape. Like, and it, like he obviously works his ass off, but when I'm trying to work out, I'm like, oh my God, I need to burn like 6,000 calories real quick. Like we got to <laughs> move this thing where it's so like for a, a man's body and a woman's body are so different. And I think about that. I mean, obviously I spend most of my time with him, but seeing the way that what the results are, he gets from working out versus like what I'm doing. I'm like, oh my God, this is like, not fair. It's oh, some bullshit. <laughs> I have to look at John all the time going, ah, you know, and everyone's just like, oh, you must, he must eat so strict. And I'm like, "Mm -hmm." (laughs) mm-hmm. Does he not? That's my John too. It's, I mean, your John's abs are like, obviously they are on their own planet. To be fair, he like works out a lot, like a lot, a lot, a lot. Yeah. Um, But at the same time, it's just like, you know, I'm eating my asparagus and grilled chicken <laughs> and he's, you know, uh, to the bottom of an ice cream. Thing. <laughs> what is that about? It's such it's so bullshit. Annoying. It is so annoying. Literally every night I'm in bed like 20 minutes before him. Cause he's downstairs smashing ice cream. I'm like, I have to remove myself from this situation. <laughs> It's so annoying. Yeah, <laughs> it, it is so insane. But hey, bless them. Bless those men. Uh, your clothing line, too. You you have so many different things that you're doing, but you've got uh, Loka. How, what went into you wanting to put this line together and uh, and getting it out to people? Honestly, it was motivated by I was in, I had gone back to school for fashion. Oh, but, awesome. Was right. As COVID was hitting, I had already started school. So, yeah. That actually Where kept- were you doing that? Uh, the Academy of Art University. So I was doing it online, which okay. is cool yeah. based out of San Francisco. Um, yeah. So I was learning about design and marketing and, you know, the fashion industry because mm-hmm. I've just always obviously love clothes. And yeah. I just wanted to, you know, think about other things that I really like to do. I like to feel like I have some layers, you know, we don't mm-hmm. we just want to wear one hat, want to wear several. Yeah. Uh, so I was I love school, a good hat. Yeah. I love a good hat. And uh, I was in school and COVID hit and I was bored. So I just started coming up with ideas and I was like tie dyeing stuff in my house in my kitchen and just doing like, you know, I was just trying to find a way to motivate myself to get up and do stuff because yeah. that was just a very confusing time for everybody. And that's kind of how Loka was born. And then I, so I was doing it like that first year I did so much stuff, like an incredible yeah. amount of stuff. And then when I was at WWE, I kind of had to like give the reins over to, you know, a company that was helping me distribute and stuff like that because I just couldn't in an apartment yeah. in Orlando be running yeah. a business, but I was still doing, you know, I think I did like two different drops that year. I still haven't done anything this year because I've just kind of been waiting to feel like to be in a good space. You've uh, been pretty busy as well. I've been really busy. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. But with that said, I am planning to have stuff out this fall in time for like Halloween season. So nice. um, I'm just working out the details. I've had some changes of heart on colors and different things. So that's just me. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think it's going to be really fun and I'm excited to, to do it again. And I even said to John that I just missed 
having something else that like really like, you know, that you yeah. really think about. Yeah. Yeah. So. It's definitely nice to like switch lanes a little bit sometimes, yeah. switch gears, work on something else, be creative in another space. Yeah. So um, I'm going to start doing that again. So that's yeah. Great. Oh, good. Yeah. I can't wait to see that. I, I mean, is it, are we still sticking with the tie dye theme? Uh, not, not no. 100%. No. Okay. <laughs> Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Um, you, as I just said, you have a million things going on. Um, what does like the next six months look like for you? A lot of work. There's tons of work. I'm so happy about it. Uh, and a few really fun trips. Like we're going to Italy in the fall, which I'm super Just for like vacation or working? Uh, for my friend's wedding. Oh, so, I know of this wedding. You know of this wedding. I know of this wedding. Yes. <laughs> so I'm very I'll be watching on Zoom. Yes. I officially bought our flights yesterday. So I was so excited. It's been a lot of discussion about what outfits we're going to wear. Yes. Um, so yeah, it's just like, it's just going to be a lot of working and, and traveling and and just kind of, you know, getting myself where I need to be and, and moving forward and challenging my, and finding new challenges. And also, mm-hmm. you know, I going to be starting to do auditions and things like that in LA. Oh, good. I did before. I've actually just kind of been waiting for this to grow out. It looks great though. So it's, it's like, I don't know, a good, like two inches because I need yeah. shots and I didn't want my old headshots to be going out. And because I feel like I'm really pigeonholing myself with a shaved head. <laughs> right, right, right. Like yeah. she could be a criminal, a criminal, <laughs> a <laughs> yeah, Viking yeah, yeah. maybe. Like, yeah. <laughs> so I really wanted to just kind of expand my horizons. So yeah, just kind of doing all the fun stuff and entertainment and being creative and, yeah. uh, you know, that's it. I think, you know, I think that's living the dream, doing my thing. Honestly. No, I love it. It's so cool to just see you like busting your ass, doing a million different things. My favorite thing is just not being like put in a box. Not just, I mean, you're so busy with wrestling, of course, but it's awesome to like have the clothing line and to be able to go out and do auditions and like do all of these different things. It's, I I commend you for doing that because it's definitely not always the easy thing to do. So kudos to you. (laughs) Hats off. Um, Okay, I'm going to close this out with um, this final question. Favorite Canadian band and song? Uh, <laughs> you're really putting me on the spot. I'm going to go. It's not a band. She's not a okay. band. Okay. I'm going to go with the iconic Shania Twain. Yay. And I don't know what song I would like, because John and I, I introduced John to Shania Twain. So he knows about who's been of your boots been under and all that stuff. <laughs> uh, but I will say, like, I, I like remember specifically just when her Up album came out. Yeah. And just being like with my girlfriends in Calgary with our cowboy yes. hats. <laughs> what a time to be alive. Oh, classic. So, yeah, I'll go with that. <laughs> we'll do the whole album of Up. Yeah. Uh, the whole I, lo- album. I actually just, I, I just had it on yesterday, but I have a Shania Twain football jersey. I think I was like, maybe a couple glasses of wine in and I like saw her post about it. I'm like, I need a Shania Twain football Jersey. (laughs) And then I just like never wore it anywhere, but I finally had it on the other day. I was like, I got to get this into like the cycle. It's a great shirt. Oh my gosh. I love love it. it. (laughs) All right. Well, Taya, so good to have you on here. Keep kicking ass. um, And just looking forward to seeing what, what the future holds for you. Thank you. And I just want to say to you, you have always been a huge inspiration to me because I remember <laughs> watching you on Canadian television, talking about wrestling yes. and made all of us Canadians very proud. Oh, thank you so much. I love that. Those were like the good old days of just like, it's always so fun. Like thinking back to those like early days of like, what am I going to do? What's the future looking like? And it's so cool to like have gone from that to doing the things that I've been able to do to like accumulate all these like great friends. Like the fact that we get to sit on here and like shoot the shit and like reminisce about Canadian things. And you're like Swiss father is the best. (laughs) I love it. Well, thank you very much for having me. I really appreciate it. And all the best. (laughs) You too. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.